Welcome to the last night of Dice Tower West 2022. Boo, this man. Boo, I say. I'm Tom Vassell. And, and you are? I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Yay! Yay! And after two years and two months, we have... I'm Sam Healy. Hello. Fine. All righty. Okay, so welcome. Well, I know that this is the last night, and the, the good thing is this place don't close. So when we're, you're done here, which will be around midnight, is a Ooh. long list. Really? What? Oh, okay. You finally roped me into TI4. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Sam. <laughs> but you can play games all night slash morning. But well, we are really glad that you came here. We're glad that you came back. It's good to be back. Yeah. Yes. So um, with that in mind, I, we're in the same place here next year. I don't know if the dates have been announced yet, but they're like around the same time here in March and at the same place. So we'll have more information on that. But I don't want to get too caught up in that Sweet. for two reasons. One, um, that's next year. And two, we got a top 10 list to do. So, yeah. In Dice Tower Convention year two, I believe, we, well, in the first Dice Tower Con, we did our first top 10 list ever. Yes. Which, the uh, live one, anyway, we, live was very different. We weren't used to people laughing when we spoke. <laughs> in, uh, in, just in life, for you. No, I'm used to it. Oh, you are? It's just not the kind you think. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Thanks a lot. Oh, Anyhow, I'll give you a hug afterwards. That was our top no, 10 overrated games. And then in year two, we did our top 10 signs of a game store. Um, or something like that. I can never remember the exact titles. So we're doing that one again. Yeah. Because we have Sam back. That's right. Now, before we start, I want to be really clear. Um, first of all, does anyone here own a game store? OK, we're not talking about yours. <laughs> Does anyone here want to own a game store? We're also not talking about that. And in fact, to be clear, because a list like this may bring up bad game store stories, mm -hmm. the two game stores that were most slamming no longer exist. That we know of. No, they, we know. <laughs> Why would they still exist? I, I didn't know. I drive by there every week just to check. Just to make sure. <laughs> Drive by. Are they back? <laughs> They're not back. Yeah, and so this is actually a tough conversation for us, or at least for us, because in Miami, there's almost no game stores. There's a few game stores up in Fort Lauderdale, but that's an hour away. Yeah. So we have very few, so there's very little opportunity. Also, we have to walk about five, I was about to say five minutes, it doesn't take that long to walk into the other room. but. <laughs> We have a room full of the Dice Tower Library, so it's tough for us to want to go anywhere. Uh -huh. um, but we've so been... you've turned into hermits, basically, is what you're saying. No, we are the game store. Oh. Except you can't buy anything. It's like a game. Can you call yourself a store if you can't buy anything there? We are a game bibliotheque. Ooh. Donde esta? <laughs> you got hit with the big word. <laughs> no, but uh, so when I, at least for me, when I made my list here, I was talking about both a game store slash game cafe slash game pub, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, a place to go to buy and or play games. Yeah. And we were in agreement there? Yes. Yeah, so pretty far, much. So good. Yeah, if you... I'm still waiting for where we deviate. If uh -huh. I'm not going to... I don't... I'm not going to deviate. So what are your first five? How is that different than your... I told you I'm not deviating. Who is this man? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're just going to go through these. Uh, 10 through 1 and see what happens. So let's start with number 10. Yeah. Ooh. Number 10. <laughs> was that you? Where is that? No, that was, that was Eric Summer. That was not Eric Summer. I think that was that not was me. You. What am I, a ventriloquist? That, that wasn't was me. Let's try, to, no, let's try it again. Do it. Number 10. <laughs> that is some magical <laughs> crap right there, bro. <laughs> Now while drinking water. Yes, do it. <laughs> How do you do that? 
multi-talented. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know who's first. Oh, it's, uh, Who it's is? Z. Okay, Z. Oh, Z. Huh? No, it's Z. What are we in Canada? All right, my number 10 is pretty straightforward. You'd think it would be something that wouldn't be missed, but I've definitely been into game stores where this is not clear to me, and I'm talking here about clearly posted signage, hours of operation, directions towards the bathroom, that sort of thing. I have definitely rolled up to a game store, probably on a Monday. I try to go in. They appear to be closed. I can't tell if they're normally closed on Mondays. I know some game stores do that. It just doesn't say that anywhere. So I don't know if they're out to lunch, actually closed, in the bathroom. Should I leave? Should I wait? Uh, so you need to let people know what's going on. And it looks professional also. You don't want to be one of those game stores where it's, we'll be open around 10 a.m. and we close around when I eat dinner. It's like, no, dude, you, you need to run this like a store. Right. So that's, that's one that, again, seems obvious, but I've definitely not seen it being done. Just to clarify, your yeah. number 10 for top 10 signs of a good game store is, is signs. Is to have signs. <laughs> and, they, and they only get more meta from here. All right. All right. Just... Yeah, number nine is store, and number eight is games. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, who's next here? Sam, you're next. Okay, uh, my number 10. Uh, my number 10 is that you offer a welcoming atmosphere in your store. Now, what uh, that means, they know. yeah, they know they exactly know. what that means. Well, but for you watching girls. in internet oh. land, what that simply <laughs> means is that you don't look like you live in a cave, and that cave is your store and your bed is behind the cash register. Wow, <laughs> that was real specific, was and I know what you're talking specific. about. And you, yes, you I know, do know exactly. Yes. You've been in that store. I've been in that store. Yes. He's been in that bed. Oh, I, nah. I rescind nah. my upcoming hug. Nah. <laughs> That's nasty. You need Jesus. Oh. <laughs> All right, so you need to offer a welcoming <laughs> store. Now, look, that's not just where your staff stays while you walk in the store. You need to have a bright store. You need to have good lighting. You need to have clean carpets. You need to have clean windows. Okay, you're literally like, this is my top, like, six through two. <laughs> this Stop is it. all encompassing in a welcoming store atmosphere. You're going to run out of stuff. No, I'm not. I got, I got nine more things right here. All right. Yeah. So don't make your store look like a cave. I don't care if that's what you want it to look like. What if it's cave themed? That's what I just said. <laughs> don't go with the cave theme because people don't like caves. They're nasty and they're smelly. And usually your store is going it's to be nasty good, and smelly too. It's a good way to get around cleaning if you call your store like the trolls keep. <laughs> You walk in and it's like, oh, I like true. what you've done with the place. <laughs> I like the motif. It's awesome. It's great. Thank you. Well done. Just saying. Hot tips. <laughs> All right. My number 10 is I think it's important for your store to have an online connection um, with your people who come to the store. Now, you can have an online store where you sell stuff or not. I don't think that's necessary. It's nice, but, you know, that, that's a lot of work. But I'm talking about... I don't want to, Z drives to your store apparently to see if it's open or not. <laughs> I want to be able to go online and easily figure this out. Oh, or, oh, okay. I want to know that you're having Friday Night Magic and you're not letting anyone else in the store before I get there. Yes. Okay. Actually, I'd like to know if you're doing Friday Night Magic, even if you are still letting people in the store. Okay, fine. <laughs> before I get go there. Go ahead and salt half our audience. Okay, All right. Yeah, thank you. Now, I, but no, it just, it's nice to be able to go there and look at things and see upcoming events and stuff. I really like that online connection. Yep. And so when I go to a city, I'm looking for a store. That's my first view of your store. And so many times I go there and I'm like, oh, there's some pictures from, oh, 2012. I'm like, all right, is that person still alive? <laughs> you know, That's what know. you think. Wait. <laughs> That's what you think of, the first thing you think of when you see a picture 
from 2012 no, is, no, no, no. oh, wait, wow. no, when you see a picture from 2012, the first thing you think of is, is that person still alive? Ten years ago. That's what are you, Mayan? Death must have been ensued. very no, strange. No, no, I mean, like, Anybody on the Mayan joke? That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here for about an hour. <laughs> so begging for applause now. Anyway, online connection <laughs> is my number 10. Number nine. <laughs> I still got to figure out how he does that. Got him. All right, my number nine is once I'm in that store, because I now know you're open and not in the bathroom, I want you to not be too clingy to me as a customer. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. But, that's a good one. But I want you to be available, okay? I don't want to walk into like one of those stores where somebody's trying to sell me a fridge or whatever, and they literally say, "Hi, can I help you?" No, I'm good. And then you walk the store with me. Don't be that person. But I also need to be able to find you if I actually have a question or want to buy something. You, you'll back me up on this. I've actually picked something up off of a rack, gone to the counter waited and waited and then I put it back and left without purchasing said thing because there was no one there to help me. I was laughing in the back. <laughs> you were <laughs> laughing, yes. So no, n neither one of those extremes. You need to be available but not so clingy that I'm, I am uncomfortable in your space. It is your space after all. Um, so yeah, you need to find a nice balance for that. And there's so many places that do this correctly, you should not be suffering because you don't have a frame of reference. Go to basically any store, except the fridge store. And you're good, you'll, you'll figure it out. So that's my number nine. My number nine actually yeah. is exactly that as well. Really? Oh, crossover. You walk the tightrope of engaging customers. Crossover twins. Yes, it, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a store and I was going in there for the purpose of purchasing something, anything, I just wanted to find it on my own. And the guy comes up and he says, hey, would you like me to help you find anything? I was like, no, okay, I got it. He takes two steps back and then watches me shop. <laughs> I'm like, dude, am I giving off the vibe that I'm going to steal something? Well, let's be fair. Mm. <laughs> Where am I gonna put it? <laughs> If I mean, if it's small enough, you could hide it in your beard. That's like a card game. That could work, yeah, but that's about yeah. it. Okay. I wouldn't want to play a game. Never mind. Um, Sir, is that inish sticking out of your beard? <laughs> is that inish or outish, sir? Oh. Um, <laughs> you guys have you, both had a gross comment. Bad comment, inish and outish comment. <laughs> I think I'm due. So, anyway. You need to make sure that your staff knows that people need their space. And um, you just have to walk the tightrope of engaging customers, because some customers want that one-on-one -on -one connection. They feel like that's what uh, you should be doing to them. You should be giving them attention. Other people don't. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta take that cue from the customer. You do, you, know? you yeah, gotta right. learn how to read the room. Exactly, right, right. so that's my number nine goes well with his. Give me Circuit City flashbacks. I know. Oh. Brand, go there, for me, it's guys. Brand Smart, which I think is a Florida thing, but it is. Yeah, Brand Smart and Circuit City both. Can I help you, sir? I'm like, dude, I know you got a commission, <laughs> but please take your hand out of my pocket. <laughs> All right, talking about space. Does that count as my comment? Yes, it does. Okay, that's, good. That's my number nine. Is just space. Like uh, space space or like, these are the I'm voyages of the Starship the store, but I'm not talking about having a big store. I know real estate's expensive. Yeah. I do hope your store is bigger than you, I mean, as big as you can get. But, you know, you need to utilize your space well. For example, let's say you get a bunch of boxes of new games. Put them on the shelf. <laughs> and there we go. Put the boxes out back. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I, and then if I ask you if you have it, you're like, yeah, it's over there, somewhere in those boxes. That's happened at three different stores I've been in. I oh can only think goodness. of one. And I'm wondering if, much like a picture from 2012, is everyone I saw in there still alive? <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, but I, it just, 
I feel bad Stone when I'm trying to get through the aisle, and you've just set it up so that people like me have a hard time getting through. You know, only like five-year-old children can slide down the aisle. But just there's stuff all over the, this place. You're not sure if it's even for sale sometimes yes. or not. Right. Yes. You know, there's there's posters up on the wall and things that there's dust on that statue that's been there for the, you know when you opened the store, mm -hmm. and it just it feels claustrophobic. And I've ducked into some stores and ducked right back out. You know, I've been in stores that have a small space, but they feel welcoming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've been in small stores where, you know, the aisles, it's Indiana Jones style, they're closing in on you <laughs> as you go back farther in the store. And sometimes yeah. you get back in the store and then you're not sure how to get back out because <laughs> you turn around and someone else is shopping and it's apparently a one-way aisle. <laughs> yeah. so, We've got a place... We've got a place in, in Wenatchee that is just like that. And they let people use shopping carts in there too. So it's like you have a shopping cart and you're coming down the aisle, you gotta turn around and walk around the other place. But it's like, it's not just board games. It's, it's actually the game, the, the store where you can get the largest, the best selection of board games in our town, but they also carry like guns and uh, like water, watercraft, you know, tubes and inner tubes and fishing really? poles. And, yeah, it's like an all. You can walk in there and literally a, be like, "I'll take cash and guns and six Berettas." Yes, <laughs> you can. Yes, you absolutely can. I'm, Do it yourself, deluxe edition. That's right, baby. Wow, that is right. I'm starting to see why you have a different, you know, eight through one here. Yeah, there's a lot. This of is going to be a whole lot of new stuff, Sam. <laughs> but I, I, I can't wait. I will say this though: what you're talking about, we're not talking about amount of space we're talking about how you yes. utilize the space one of my favorite shops is in spokane and it's i don't know how many square feet it is but it is not large at all but it's one of the best stores i've been to in a very very long time and it's because he does a lot of what we're talking about already yeah yeah all right so number nine space the final frontier number eight all right, my number eight is ideally a large selection, but more importantly than that, a well-organized selection. Did you read my list? No. Have okay. you heard me speak of guns? <laughs> no. Okay. So again, my number eight, ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, my number eight, large and well-organized selection. It really, the large is dependent on other stuff we're talking about, right. if you have a big store. But I, there needs to be some rhythm and logic to where things are and why they are there and how I can figure out where things are without, again, having to hunt you down and ask you why would you know, these hot games be way in the back, but you have all these things that clearly haven't sold since 2012 and that death picture right at the front of the store. Why is that here? Uh, can I do a timeout real quick? Yes. Can we talk about the library while we're on this? No. 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 I was, I'm sorry, but I was appalled. No. No. Okay, no. No. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to go ahead with, um, no. I'm, uh, no. I probably won't be back next year, folks. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> this picture's from around 2012. <laughs> Who is that man? <laughs> All right, so anyway, that's my number eight. Is that your number eight? My number eight is well-displayed stock, yes. It has to be out where we can see it. It has to be out where... It's like, like Tom was saying on his last one, where you don't have to go dig through a box uh, that's just been delivered. Um, it needs to be well displayed. It needs to be o organized well as well. Uh, as well, as well, as well, as well. <laughs> so uh, it's, I've, I've been in too many shops where, like the front window is what? You guys have probably seen the front window. All of the games that they store in the front window are what? They're faded, they're sun faded. Why? Because they put it up there and it looks great when they did, but now it doesn't because it's a white box that's faded out. Yeah. Well, that's not well displayed anymore. You need to either change it or, you know, get something else up there. Do the paint job yourself. I have no idea. 
but you need to display your stock well so that we can see it and so that it makes your store look good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really bad look. I agree. When you walk up to a store and you can tell those boxes have been there for a long time, yeah. they're really faded. And you it, know what the cover looks like, so you look at it and go, and some, wow. And sometimes this it, has been ignored for a long time. Sometimes it doesn't take a long time. The sun can have an effect on... on because it, it's determined by how the sun hits the front of your yeah, store. Right, calm you down, it science fair. Yeah, it's like every right. two days in Florida, but it, you have to, that's the kind of stuff you got to take care of. You got to watch that stuff. All right, my number eight is something unique. Okay. I don't know what that means, actually. I but feel like I'm actually looking at a picture from 2012. <laughs> <laughs> that right. is dead. So... Several years ago, me, Sam, and Z went to a um, convention in Ohio, and we were there a day or so early. So we yeah. drove to oh, a yeah. city. Was it? It wasn't Cincinnati, was it? What city did no. we go to? I don't remember. We were, we were near or in Miami, Ohio. Sure, yes. but we drove to one of the bigger cities in Ohio. I forget which one. And I said, "Let's go find a game store." We went to a museum. Yeah. Then we went to a game store. And we went to I think three or four in a row. Yeah. Yes. And. They all looked the same, except the last store. Mm -hmm. they, there was a bed in there, and the guy was sleeping <laughs> on it. <laughs> no, but the last store we went into was really neat. They had all kinds of, it was, they had a good selection of games, and they had comics and books, like many things do. But at the front, they had a new game set up under like a glass case. And you, this was a game that had just come out a couple weeks ago right. that was set up, and so you could see what it looked like. And there was a sign that said demos, and I thought, wow, I haven't seen that before. That's interesting. That's different. That's the store I remember. The other stores were carbon copies. They weren't that interesting. We went into them. We tried to, you know, we do what everyone does when you go into a local store. You're like, oh, what's the cheapest thing we can buy? Mm. So we don't look like jerks as we were trying to back out. Well, one store we were able to walk out because the guy ignored us. So, you know, <laughs> see, see other numbers on his list. Yeah. But, um, but that store felt different. And I know it's different matters because there are a lot of game stores. And I can recall the unique, interesting ones I've been to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, there, there's, uh, can, we, can we give names of shops? Do you care? You already mentioned the one Night's Watch Games, shop. I don't care, in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, they actually uh, designed their entire store with their name in mind. And it looks like the hall of a the, the feast hall of a king on the inside. Wait, is this a positive thing? Yeah, it's very well, positive. Of course, you can say the name of the store. Super story. positive. Yeah, you already did. Say it again, Sam. Night's Watch Games in San Antonio, Texas. Buy one get one free this week. No, no, it's not buy one get. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> They're gonna kill me. I'm gonna see them in two weeks. They'll be out of business <laughs> in two weeks. Yeah. So listen, huh? Sorry, I'm trying to keep the tables from falling off the stage. Is that okay? Why, why would they Boy? be moving so much? Because I'm pushing on them. All right, okay. just, just clarify. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyway, Night's Watch Games, they, they have this really cool design on the inside. They have uh, uh, fully wooden like chairs and tables. One table in the back is the king's table, and you have to... Uh, you know, that's where they hold their, their championship of all of their card game tournaments and everything like that. It's really cool. I, I'm, it's like literally touching my face, dude. I know. Put it in your beard. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Yep. So... It's a good thing it's the last show. I yep. will be able to... Anyway, mm. it's, one, it's a very good... Check it out online. They are online. You can check them out. They have a Facebook page as well. And that's a good example of what we're talking about for his number. Number eight. Yeah. Number seven. He must be really bored in between numbers. I feel bad. <laughs> Is that pre record I hope so. Anyway. No, it's not. I know it's not. Whatever. Um, <laughs> where was I? Number seven, right. My number seven is a store that has regular discounts and sales. And this ties, again, to a lot of things we've said already. Faded? Faded? What is that? All right, wow. That's a lot of money. Um, I'm talking about, again, those faded boxes, those boxes covered in dust that you know you haven't sold in more than six years. Put them on sale. Make space for new stock. Cycle things. Have, have actual, you know, weekly, or maybe not weekly, but like have a discount every now and then. Have, a, have events. 
have reasons for people to come back. I've been to stores that have been to years apart, and it's like I never left. You know, yeah. they have, yes, they have, okay, oh, look, Seven Wonders is here. Okay, so that's new. And then the rest of the store is identical. It's like a time warp in there. So you have to move that old stock, you know, out of there. If it's not selling, it's taking up your space, which is not making you money. That's correct. This blows my mind. We just recently, in the last three or four years, went to a fairly well-known game store, which I won't mention. And I was shocked that this store, which is one of the most expensive spots on earth, um, say a large city on the eastern seaboard, uh, close to a large famous building. Um, this store dedicated like an entire aisle, and I was like, look at Z, I haven't seen this game in ages. And it wasn't like, oh, this is a rare, unique game. No, this is garbage from, well, back when the guy died in 2012. <laughs> you know, so, no, but I mean, or even older than that. Just, yeah. And it's like, sell it, get rid of it. It's to, and they were still full price. Full price when it came out, which by now oh. would be a sale, a sale, because it's, <laughs> That's true. it's That's you true. know. But yeah, it's the same, twenty four ninety five as the day it showed up in your store. Come on, get it out of there. Put some new blood in this thing. So yeah, my number seven, regular discounts and or sales. Cool. My number seven is you need to have a designated and comfortable play area. Um, you need to have a place where people can try out games. If you, if you are able to have games for your people to try out so that they can know what they are purchasing before they purchase it. It takes a little bit of an extra, uh, it takes a little bit of extra capital on the front end, but it will more than pay for itself because you'll have customers that appreciate what you did for them on the front end. Uh, so you need to have a com designated comfortable play area. This does not, however, mean that you need to have a larger store. That store that I was talking about in Spokane, Washington, B-Side Games, that's one of the smallest game stores I've ever been in. They have a comfortable play area. They decided to do that on purpose um, because they want to uh, give you a place to try the games that you just bought or that you're about to buy. And I think it's uh, necessary. So you need to have a designated and comfortable play area. You know, one thing you said there, I didn't think about it. That's good, that library of games that the store has. I am mind boggled sometimes at the selection that you put there, <laughs> uh, the stores have for people yeah. to play. You know, I expect to see Catan, Ticket to Ride, maybe a few hot games, and they'll have stuff like, you know, Arkham Horror with all the expansions in the box. Mm -hmm. Some old game that no one wanted that they bought, it's terrible, and they brought back and the store didn't want to do anything with it, so they stuck it in the library. And it's out of print. Also, you can't get it, but it's still there. Right, yeah. right, you can't even buy these games. What? And then, you know, there's missing pieces. It's, I, I'm, I find this more often than not, actually, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. Like a beat up library in a game store. Yep. Not bring my own games, thank you. Yeah, just mm -hmm. that general neglect covers a lot of what we're talking about. Yep. Oh, that was, it's my turn. Yep, that's my number seven. My number seven, uh, that you guys both already said it, and that's a good selection of stock, and you know, having a selection of stock. Also, perhaps, maybe things, um, yeah. Nice. Um, also, maybe having things that you yourself particularly don't enjoy. You know, I've been in stores before where you ask, do you have this game, and they kind of sneer, like, who wants to play that? No. If I have a game store, I'm selling Monopoly. Why? Because money. Yeah. You know, and to go in there and it's like, well, you go somewhere else to get that good game. Why? Why would you? I mean, that's just terrible, sure. terrible retailer principles to go to when someone comes and say, oh, well, you know, you, you need to go to Target for that and kind of sneer at them. Yeah. Target already has a better selection than most stores I've been to. This you is know? true. Yes. Why are we going to cede more to them? You know, try to have that good selection there for people to get. That's right. Down with Target. I, I want to be. I want to be clear. We're not saying that. You know, hey Target, if you're watching, you want to sponsor us. Hey. hey. You know what, Target? You can keep your money. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe Walmart. <laughs> oh. Oh No, boy. I, I can't even do that. Number six. Okay, my number six is something you kind of mentioned. 
Ooh. with the internet thing. Mine does not have the online part of it, but it's basically an interest in community slash repeat customers. There you go. And this ties to having sales, being, having space to play, all those things. But there's a lot of stores that don't seem to care about you coming back to the right. store. They don't seem to care about building a group of people that when they walk in, they are regulars. They don't seem to care if it's sort of just a revolving door and there's mostly the guy who owns it and his friends hanging out at a place that they happen to keep open through sheer inertia, it seems, sometimes. So you walk in there, nothing is welcoming or new or interesting. They don't have a rewards program. They just don't care if you're back. You want to buy something great, you don't, find. They're likely going to be out of business in six months anyway, one way or the other. But it seems that that forward thought of making people a part of that store's story isn't, isn't something that's thought about. And that's a big mistake. I know that that's a, it's a forward thinking idea, mm. as in you have to, it's not something you can do this week, you know. You can't like just go online and, and get from a distributor the, the game that's hot and you sell it and that's it. I'm, I'm thinking something longer term. But there are ways to do that. For people to feel proud of their local game store, to bring people there when they're in from out of town, that sort of thing, you know. Put some time into repeat customers, into your little gaming community through your game store. So yeah. that's my number six. I'd like to tag on the end of that. No. Uh, kind of maybe from the... He, he said no. Too bad. <laughs> oh, I won't say it. I won't say it. I was going to say something, but I won't say it. Anyway. It's on fire. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's a, anyway, he's talking from a retailer's perspective. Yeah. Um, from a customer's perspective, please realize that the last two years for your brick and mortar stores have been an absolute nightmare. You can help them get back to where they used to be mm -hmm. with giving them business that even they may not deserve because some of them aren't just aren't doing the stuff that we're talking about. Yeah. But you can help them get back to where they can do all of this stuff by throwing them some, some business. Mm -hmm. uh, game stores right now have it horribly hard because everybody is ordering stuff online now because we've grown accustomed to it over the last couple of years. We need to try to break that mold and get back into the brick and mortar to start, start helping them out some more so that they can get back up on their feet and start being the stores that you want them to be. Yep. yep. I, I kind of agree with some of that. I don't get the part where you say give them business even if they don't deserve it. Well, because maybe they can't do some of this stuff right now because they don't have the capital to pull well, it off. Well, then they would deserve it. You know what I'm saying? If you're saying they don't deserve it, like if the store is trash or not a very good store. I, I get what you're saying there, yeah. I'm, I'm not, uh, I didn't necessarily mean if they're neglecting to do some of the things. I'm just, maybe they're not able to do some of these things just yet because they don't have the money to do it yet. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. they don't technically deserve your money, so to speak, because they haven't really done anything for you yet. But right. let's help them get back to where they can then deserve to have us come back. You know what I mean? Yeah, rough couple of years and all that. Yeah. Well, that wasn't yours. My number six. <laughs> Sam got two. Sorry, ones. sorry. No, that wasn't. That was just on the something I thought of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. All right. My number six is uh, you. 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 My number seven was designated play area, designated comfortable play area. So if you already have that, you're probably going to have some people that are going to get a, get a little hungry while they're there playing games in your store. So you also num number six need to have some snacks and some drinks there, and it needs to be well stocked. It needs to be uh, reasonably priced as well. Don't gouge your customers. Don't try to make money that uh, from them horribly so from stuff that cost you 15 cents. Don't charge them three bucks for a can of Coke. You know, be reasonable about or, it. Or but if, keep it well stocked and else? on. You gotta put it up like this. Dude. No, my mic. <laughs> I think my mic is dying. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, I say um, when you're buying a soda, also don't have only diet and then sigh really loud when someone asks you for a drink. It'd be like, oh man, I'm just, all right. 
they're scrambling. Yes, and so um, I've really lost my train of thought there. Okay, no, but I mean. I Diet Coke, about, sighing. Yeah, well, maybe like sighing really loud, like why do people have to have snacks or whatever? But I can't tell you the number of times I've gone to a store and they have like one drink. Yeah. You know, like, would, would, and, and, they, and they have them all listed too. Ooh, thank you. That's yours. This oh, mic. I get my old busted one back? Thanks. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't know we had a fifth mic. All right. Thank you, Mike, for the mic. All right, anyway, my number... It's not funny. Five. Okay, so number five could six, be number six, one. Six, no, six, oh, number six. six. Thank you, number six. So my number seven was a good selection of stock. You guys combined it, but I thought it was important enough to separate it. My number six is rotation of stock. Mm. And you know, I'm not going to go belabor it too much because they mentioned it. But, you know, just for crying out loud, always have new stuff in stock. Get the new stuff. Have the old stuff, too. A store that I like a lot, recently I went in there, and there were many, many expansions to games at this store, like 20, 30 different expansions, and not one base copy that matched those expansions. Wow. <laughs> wow. That just, that doesn't, that's not logical. Yes, I mentioned it, and I was told it was not logical, and they were kind of like, yeah, what do you do? <laughs> oh, I, I, I can tell you what to do, actually. But oh. just, yeah, I hate the whole brush the dust off in the back or going through. Uh, we used to have the one game store that we talk about you know, that no longer exists. The owner would tell me all the time, he's like, I just don't know. No one buys these games. I said, well, you could lower the price. Yeah, but then it won't make any money. But if it sits there on your shelf, you're not, you're making, not making any, any money. money. And when it sits there, it's wasted re retail space. Yeah. It's terrible. The only thing I can think of is that some stores like the fact that when you come in, you're like, wow, 500 different games. And 10 of them are good. Or 10 of them sell. It's not that 10 of them are good. It's that people are looking for those 10. But yeah. also good. Um, well. I'm just saying. Anyway, rotate your stock. Yep. Yes. Number five. Okay, number five is going to go quick for me because it's something Sam already basically said, and that is open games to look at or demo. Cool. I need to, you know, ideally you want people to be able to look at the game right there. The last thing you want, I would imagine, is how people have to jump on their phone to look at pictures of a game because then they're on their phone. And you know what else is on their phone? Amazon. <laughs> right. Yep. So show them something that they can't get on the phone. They can look at the pieces. They can shuffle the card. They can look at it. You know, they can see what it's like. How much room it takes. You can't get that from a picture, right? Right. Just how it plays a little bit. Let me, let me thumb through the rule book for, for a couple of seconds. Something like that. Something tactile to remind them. You can get it right here, right now. We offer something you can get elsewhere. That sensation, that feeling, that, you know, that brick and mortar part of this all. You got to give people that because then they're not going to have that connection, again, to, to, your, to your space and your store. So, yeah, open, open games to look at and or demo. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, number five for me is uh, caters to as many game genres as possible. Now, what I mean by that is we kind of hit on it a little bit when we were talking about the scheduling and what day do they have Magic Gathering night and all that other kind of stuff. And sure. the Monopoly thing. Yeah, you need to have all of those things in there. Um, yeah. uh, puzzles. You need to have people. People look for puzzles in game shops. Mm -hmm. You need to have puzzles on their shelves. Um, you need to have those kinds of things uh, as well as the Monopoly copies, as well as the Magic the Gathering sets, as well as the Pokemon cards, as well as all of that stuff, as well as board games. You need to do all of that as much as possible. You can't... I know that stores have told me before we would not be in existence if we didn't do Magic the Gathering. I get it. They spend a truckload of cash on Magic the Gathering cards. But that, what if that goes away? What are you going to do now? You don't have. <laughs> what? Is it not going away? Is that what you're talking about? Say it ain't so. <laughs> That's just what I'm saying. You need to cater. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Up. No, let's put it that way. Yeah. That's all my right. number five. I love it. 
My number yeah, I love Godzilla too. <laughs> <laughs> My number five um, could be number one in a sense. So we had a really bad game store in our area that the owner was, you know, the comic book store guy. It was just bad. Almost all our stories come from that store. That store closed down, and another store opened up in our area where they were very, very friendly. We had a great relationship with them to the point where I bought all their chairs when they went out of business. Um, and they went out of business, not because they weren't friendly, but because they didn't run a business. They were nice, but they ran a game club. And I know this because when Z went to the counter to buy something, the guy who was supposed to be at the counter was too busy playing Magic the Gathering to come to the counter to sell you whatever you were trying to buy. Mm -hmm. And that happened all the time there because it was a club. And you can't run a club. I mean, there's so many of the things we talk about are underneath this category. It's a business. You know, people are like, I want to open a game store. Why? Because I love games. Oh, okay. Guess what? You're not going to be doing a whole lot of that, you know, because there's all kinds of stuff. There's businessy things. You need to make wise decisions. Why did you get 10 copies of that game? Because I like it so much. But does it sell? Right. You know, you need to know profit margins. You need to take business classes. Um, someone recently at, was told me they were planning to start a game cafe. And I said, what do you know about business? And they said, nothing. I said, well, you probably should learn because that's what you're doing. You know, <laughs> you need to understand that that is first and foremost. Yep. And I would say, I would, I'm just making up numbers, but half of the stores that do go out of business go out because they just kind of went into it as a whim. This is a hobby. This will be fun. I'm going to get to do something cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Sure, I want that enthusiasm, but also you need to make money. And th this could cover almost like the whole list, you know, sure, because sure. all these things are things good businesses should do. But you need to go into it with that mindset. Well, they do say that 54.6% of most statistics are just made up anyway, so you're all right. That's a classic. I know, that's right? A, that's a picture from 2012 right I had there. to dust that one off, too. Dead on arrival, that yeah, joke. Yeah, it was, it was, I know. Woof. Sorry. Wolf, I say. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> is this microphone dying too, or is he? I don't know. Okay, I guess we'll let's, find out after the show. Again. Was he born in 2012? Number four. Much better. Yeah, there we go. All right, number four for me is a, a little piece of something that Sam already said a while ago. Very simple. Good lighting. Not dingy, not, it's, it's not a club or a lounge, it's a game store or a cafe, and that can, you can play with that one a little bit. If it's a game store or people are playing games, on that surface, there needs to be good lighting. Because again, I'm not going to want to come back if I can't see what I'm doing or your store looks just sort of creepy. Lighting is really, really good towards helping a place not look creepy. Yep. Yeah, get some good so. lighting. Of course, if you get good lighting, then you better clean the store, too. Right, yes, that's true. Well, I guess don't use one as a Band-Aid for the other one. Yeah. <laughs> like Can you I, see the dirt? Like nope. if a light bulb burns out, don't be like, whoo, finally the store's clean. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the, no, those are not related. <laughs> buy a light bulb, buy a broom. Figure it out. That's what business classes are for. <laughs> <laughs> this is 101, taught by, by Z Garcia. Hello, by class, a broom. welcome. By a broom. Some lights, figure it out. <laughs> welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> All right, my number four, uh, you need to have knowledgeable staff working your store, uh, whether you're going to be there or not. And this is not in lieu of being friendly. They also need to be friendly and knowledgeable. So friendliness is a given. You're running a retail environment. You need to be uh, friendly to the people who walk through your door. But you also need to be knowledgeable about what you're talking about. Um, we've walked into stores uh, often that the people don't have any idea what they're talking about. Um, now, the stores that I've run into recently are not like that because They've lost a lot of people. They've lost a lot of their staff. And more, more often than not, it's their owners and their owner's close friends that are running the store, and they're doing a good job of it. But 
if you're hiring new people, you need to hire people who know what they're talking about. I do know owners that hire people that are specifically well-versed in one, going back to what I said in number five, the different game genres that are out there. Uh, this is my Pokemon person, and she knows what she's talking about if you're talking about Pokemon. This is my board game guy. He knows everything that you can possibly know about board games right now, that kind of thing. Knowledgeable staff. They don't have to know everything about everything, but they need to have some knowledge underneath their belt if you're going to put them behind that desk. Yeah. All right. My number four is a crossover with Z. Earlier I made fun of his number 10, but mine is exactly the same thing. Clear information <laughs> slash signs. Now, dear children who are seeing this in the year 20. 32. Oh. oh, I guess this is okay. You're going to be dead by then. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty no. good. Uh, when you're nice job. This, so we're currently, when we go into a store these days, we need to know should we wear a mask or not. And I haven't a clue. Because they put up a sign in March 2020 that said you have to wear a mask in the store. And, and they never sunbated. took it down. Yeah. It but the guy sunbated. at the counter isn't wearing a mask. So I think I don't have to follow that sign, but I don't know. <laughs> also, the sign said the store closes at 7. It's 7.30 and there's people in the store. Are they friends of the owner playing a game in the back that they don't want to stop? Yes. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am so confused when I see signs at stores like, you know, do not use this bathroom, and then I see someone go in and use it. And, or whatever the signs are, and they're just, they're so mixed up, and it, it just really bothers me. I, I, I need to know, or when there's two different prices on the same game, you know, it's very confusing. Clear signage, but when the sign is done, take it down. You're like, Magic the Gathering, you know, the new set's coming out. I'm like, that came out like three years ago. Why is that picture still up on your window? Because it looks cool. Because it's Ravnica, and it's awesome. <laughs> That's not why, though. It's because they're too yes, lazy it to take it. <laughs> yes, it is. Simic Guild. All right. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. I know magic. That's a, that's a weird flex. All right. Number three. All right, my number three, I'm, I have to tell you, fellas, I'm surprised I'm the first one to say it, but I know it's because it's coming up on your lists. Mine? On both of y'all's. You don't uh -uh. know nothing. Of course it's coming up. I'm, I'm thinking maybe even number ones. Clean bathrooms. <laughs> you know it's coming. I don't know. Come on. This one's on everybody's list. If you all made it this top ten list, it would be on all of those. Yep. Maybe not number one, maybe not nine. Or, I mean, it's on all of them. Clean your bathrooms. Buy a broom. <laughs> You're going to need more than a broom. <laughs> I don't know how cleaning bathrooms works, okay? <laughs> you don't clean a toilet with a broom. You're going to need more than a broom, bro. <laughs> you asked for that one. What's a plunger? So, so we, at the store, the, the first store, the one that's way out of business now, so it doesn't affect anybody, um, the owner's bathroom, the bathroom there, there was two bathrooms, a men and a woman's bathroom. So There was two? Well, we weren't allowed to use the woman's bathroom, obviously. Okay. The other bathroom was so bad that we, I went to the nearby McDonald's yes. and used their bathroom, which was bad, <laughs> but better than the game store bathroom. Then the owner said, hey, we're going to open up both bathrooms. And board gamers, I don't know why he made a delineation, can use the, what was previously known as women's bathroom. And for one week, it was clean. Mm -hmm. And then he laid carpet down in the bathroom. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Let your minds run wild! Wafted in, wafted Ooh. in. It's that's why you need the boys. That's why you get the broom. And that's why I went back to the With daughter. a carpet? How do you... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> broom a carpet? I also don't know how sweeping works. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. No, that's true. That's a true story about the carpet. Yes. Carpet in the bathroom. All right, my number three <laughs> is actually been mentioned by, by Tom already. I actually did also, I talked about well-displayed stock, mm -hmm. but you also do need to cycle your stock. You need to circulate your stock. Uh, pay attention to your stock, and you need to study your stock. 
you need to see what is selling. And what I have no idea what's going on behind me, so that's fine. Um, you need to pay attention to your stock and refresh it as needed. Because just what everybody's already said, you don't want the sun-dried, you know, sun... Tomatoes. Yeah, that too. Uh, grocer, deli, slash board game store. Um, you, you want to have stuff that looks in, uh, engaging. You want to have stuff that draws people in. And if you have just the same old stuff all the time, there's nothing new, there's nothing energetic, there's nothing grabbing their attention, they're gonna stop coming around. So you need to pay attention to your stock, but even just you know, coming away from the well displayed and how good your store looks, you're running a business. And yeah. this is part of running your store. <clears throat> Finding out what's selling, and finding out what's not selling and getting it off your shelves and getting more what does sell in that spot because that's real estate in your store. So you've got to pay attention to your stock and refresh it as needed. Yup. All right, my number three. I think this one's new to the list, I don't know. Oh. It's control the gangs. All right, so. <laughs> control the gangs? This is a long list. What? No, no, okay. I'm just, I don't know. What, Okay. You're going to have several people come to your store, and it's going to become their store. But just to clarify, mm. it's your store. And I've been to so many stores that someone there, it's their store. In fact, me and uh, Mike Delicio, we're, we were coming back. Um, we were traveling, uh, I don't know, several months ago, and we stopped okay. at a store. And there was a person there who was clearly not working at that store. Okay. Who, Flashing a weapon. No, but we... This is our turf, I say. No, but I'm very confused. <laughs> Get, what, what are you saying? I'm saying that don't let one person drive off the rest of your customers. Yeah. Don't let a oh. group of people drive off the rest of your customers. You need to deal with those problem customers. There's going to be that guy who knows every game, and someone comes in, and they're going to pick up a game, and they're going to say, this looks interesting, and they're going to go, no, that's terrible. You won't like that. That's, that's only ranked you know, 3,246 on BGG. And the person's going to go, what's BGG? Oh, let me tell you, and you need to dive and tackle that guy <laughs> and drag him out of the store. And, and that's... Hit him in the head with a box of Gloomhaven. <laughs> <laughs> so joking aside, I've seen this time and time again. I've seen stores where customers went behind the counter and were serving people. They're like, I just love the store so much. Good. Then shop there. And that's it. Yeah. You know, and, and the owners kind of sometimes let the customers run over them or that really cranky group of gamers in the back that when someone goes and plays with them, they have a terrible time. Yeah. Or the Magic the Gathering players who when you kind of move in that direction, you almost die from chemical warfare. <laughs> you need to deal with this. There's many weapons. You were talking about knives. I'm talking about BO and worse. Mm -hmm. Carpets in the bathroom. Nature's weapon. <laughs> but there are many stores where I've gone in and I thought, Oh, that person's here. Do I want to go home now? And that's not good, right? And they're like, well, that person buys a lot. Yeah, but how many customers are they driving away? And you need to, you need to control that. And it's tough because you have to have a discussion with them. And we want stores to be open to everybody, but you can't let one person or people ruin it for everybody else. Yeah. That's a good one. Agreed. That's a good one. Number two. My number two is a crossover with Sam, I would say. I think kind of. It's clean um, bathrooms again? <laughs> no. It is uh, staff that is working slash helping, not playing games or hanging out. You kind of said that too, right? I did. Yeah. Yep. And again, this one's... <laughs> what? All right. Dang, it's getting weird. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting real strange back here. <laughs> I hope you're happy, Chris, wherever you Chris are. Chris is uh, an absolute troll. Where is he? Christopher, you are a giant troll. <laughs> I salute you. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's it. Just, again, they need to be available. They need to be helping. Not, it's not a club. They're not there to play games. I shouldn't have to interrupt you and feel bad about interrupting you to then give you money. That's so awkward. I mean... Mm -hmm. That, that, that's very strange. I've been to a, I haven't been to a comic book store, so it wasn't really a board game store. I walked into a comic book store. Everyone who worked there was in the back of the store playing Mario Kart. 
It's a long time ago, right? So there you Ma go. But um, wait, Mario, Mario Kart? Cool. N64 Mario oh. Kart. It was a while ago. But they're all in the back on a V on a, on a on a TV playing Mario Kart, and I'm like, am I supposed to be in here right now? Can I look around? Should I leave? Could I wow. go up and break it up? It's just put a quarter down, and you can play in the next <laughs> game. <laughs> Bam, dude. I'm shopping. Um, yeah, it's just awkward. So you need to be there to work at a store that is a business. It's kind of logical, but there you go. My number two. My number two, there it is, for the love of all <laughs> that is cleanly and holy in this world, clean your restrooms. Yes. And yes, I put it as my number two on purpose. <laughs> You missed an opportunity, sir. No, I did not miss an opportunity, Sam. What's two plus one, Sam? <laughs> Diarrhea. Number Stop. three. That's number three. Stop. Number right one. Right there. Stop. Is pee pee. <laughs> number two is poo poo. And number three is dee dee. I that's, never called it DD. I just had to come up with something. I like it. I like it. No, that works. That works. That works. No, but seriously. We're so all right, class. Seriously, you've got to clean your restrooms, and and it's not okay. I cleaned my restroom before I opened this morning, so it's good right now. Five hours later, no, it's not. We're gamers. <laughs> when we're in there. We're Stop. not thinking about what Stop. we're doing. We're thinking about our next turn. You really, what? No, Sam, no. I'm not talking about me. <laughs> what, are what are you talking about, Sam? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to keep it real. Well, let me cross over with you here, Baker. Oh. My number two is also clean, but it's clean everything. I mean, I don't know why we're doing well, I did put and store. Okay, but that's fine. in parentheses. Right, the bathroom is number one. That's because one. you might pee everywhere, no. apparently. <laughs> well, if I put a carpet in the bathroom and there's carpet outside. Then... No, but look, there's just more than. Okay, Pavlov's Stop. dog. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Throw garbage away. Yeah. You know, all the gamers come in, yep. they, they have their gigantic Mountain Dew thing, they got a Taco Bell, and the Taco Bell wrappers. Mm. And I, so many stores, and they're sitting there because gamers aren't going to put them away. You and should, you, you should, and you, you don't, should, and you, you should clean up every yourself at this convention. And every morning I come in, there's water bottles everywhere. You don't right. buy Taco Bell, you just rent it. You know this. Stop! <laughs> How do so, we keep getting back to the same uh, thing? It's my number two! Oh! That's not, that wasn't a good choice of words. Hey, okay. he asked. No, okay, but like the parking lot, it, you know, if you are in charge of the parking lot, if your garbage can is overflowing, if you punch out pieces and there's stuff everywhere and wrappers everywhere, there's the stores that have had a decent bathroom, mm -hmm. but the store itself was cluttered. Cluttered isn't clean. You know, there's just stuff everywhere. And I'm, or you open a binder and you blow off the dust. I don't like that. Mm. That's minutes. real specific, Tom. That one might be hard to catch. I agree with everything else you said. You lost me at the dusty binder. <laughs> what? No, they have all the cards and binders, and you're flipping through them, and so it's old CCG, no one plays. And they still got the binder with the cards? Yes. Yes, and they got the miniatures with dust what all What CCG from? is it? That's none of your business. All right. Star Wars CCG. Is Star it overpower, Tom? That too. Ah, yes. That's 95. All right, that's so anyway, is. that is my <laughs> second entry on the list here. So, um, Classy. Yeah, well, Very let's well. go uh, all the way in the back there to Eric Summer for our number one. Oh. There he is. Oh. Number one. Oh. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> all right, That's my how you did it. <laughs> <laughs> We're so sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> my number one is having an area or a display in your store for the uninitiated. That's a big one, and it feeds into a lot of these things, building community, bringing people into the hobby. 
You talking about hazing people in your store? <laughs> no. I'm talking actually about the opposite. I'm oh. talking about the person who walks in and sees Teotihuacan and Gloomhaven and like things that they have no idea about and would honestly probably not make them a gamer if they did grab them and pick them up and play them and go, this is clearly not for me. Things like TI-4. Say it again. TI-4. Shut up, you like the game too. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about an area that is labeled and says, new to gaming, try these. Some games there, some yeah, open I things. I mean, come on. They get people, idea. they walk in, they don't feel lost. They don't feel like, am I supposed to be here? They, you know, so many people do not go into game stores that they don't already know because they don't know what's past the door. Mm. We have to break that feeling in, in people at large. I mean, no. Where they will feel comfortable going into a place and even if they don't know quite what that hobby is, they just might enjoy it. And you need to ease that transition as a game store owner. That's part of your job. Put a display in there, some signage, have helpful staff, all of these things so that they can try something like take it to ride and go, this is a, this is a fun hobby because yep. we know that. But someone walking off the street just sees it as strange and whatever they've seen on TV with weirdos as we're portrayed sometimes playing D&D. So break that thing, you know, help them in. That's my number one. I like it. Cool. My number one uh, kind of goes back to, I think both of you guys have really kind of touched on it, but uh, it goes back to this idea of um, the store needs to build a sense of community um, so that you're not just there to sell board games. You're also there to build the community around board games as well as the kind of boots on the ground of the larger industry that's, that's there. Um, and this can reach into a lot of different ways, but some of the ways that I've seen it, one, one of the store owners that I'm really good friends with, uh, he's, a, he's a veteran, and so he has his store listed on a registry as a safe place for veterans to come. If you're feeling you know, whatever veterans are starting to feel with PTSD or whatever it is. That's one of the ways that he builds a sense of community with his store. Has nothing to do with games. But it could because people will come to your store as a haven, not just a business. And that's what I think you need to do is build a sense of community so that people know if they need something, they can come to you about it. And they can come to you and get board games, and they can come to you and uh, have a good time in your store. Uh, yeah, reach out online. Yeah, do all of these other things that you should be doing as a store anyway, but be interested in building the community. Uh, that same business owner has talked to the other board game shops in his area, who all hate him, by the way, because he's doing a good job. And they said, why didn't you tell me you were going to open a board game store, I would have sold you mine because I want out. They don't want to build a community, sorry. They, won't, they don't want to build a community. They're there for the business aspect alone. They just want to make a buck. They've already made their buck and now they want out. This buddy of mine though, he's there about building a community. And they all hate him for it, but he's living it up. He's living it up because he puts his customers as far forward as he possibly can. Yep. All right. There you go. In Florida, where we live, there are three places, that main places to buy grocery stores. There's Walmart, which is, well, Walmart. There's Winn-Dixie and Publix. Now, Winn-Dixie and Publix are the two main grocery stores that we think about going to. Winn-Dixie is clearly cheaper than Publix. They have pretty much the same stuff, up to some degree, and I would say, you know, the, the cleanliness, the way the stores look, is fairly similar. But I will never go to Winn-Dixie over Publix, unless Publix is closed or something. And the reason for that is when I walk in Publix, I go up and down the aisles, wherever I go, the employees are, are nice to me, they treat me well, they ask me if I need help everywhere I go, all the time. It's like Disney World, but with food. <laughs> well, I guess Disney World has food, yeah. but it, it's cheaper. Yeah, I'm cutting you off. But, so my number one, you go, oh, you said it. Friendly, knowledgeable staff. 
Mm. Look, when I go into a gaming store, uh oh, I want them to say hi to me. <laughs> oh, I know what you. This is <laughs> no. He reworded it. He, 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 he this reworded is, it. Her, this is a. Uh, a correction upon history. Yeah, he That's wants, the whole reason we're doing this list. He wants to Just be so recognized. Just change history. Yes. That's what this is? Yes. Okay, folks, you might not know this. We did this list, like he said, some, some years ago, many years ago. And he said, for basically this entry, when I walk into a game store, I expect to be recognized. <laughs> he meant, he meant what he just said. It sounded like he was saying, Oh my gosh, it's Tom Vassell! <laughs> so I, of course, uh, being me, really leaned into yeah, that. Yeah, you did. And uh, gave him a nice burn for it, so. <laughs> yeah, this, nice is, job. this really encompasses so many things, and I like what Sam said. You know, you, your employees, I don't expect your employees to know the ranking of board games or every magic card thing, but you need to know the basic stuff. Yeah. And you need to be friendly to people. I mean, this is the problem with stores in general. You know, I, if I go into a store and i like, well, where's the person? I ask a question. They don't want to help me. It, it, that bothers me. I'll go somewhere else. I'll shop on Amazon, and I won't feel one bit of guilt at all. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, where's Radio Shack? For this reason, they're out of business. I would go to Radio Shack and say, I'm looking for this connecting piece. And the guy would be like, oh, well, all right, well, okay, I'll go somewhere where they do know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so the game store, it's the same way. That guy's dead now, did you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Oh. I'm so sorry about that picture I saw. It was a bunch of old guys playing war games, mm -hmm. and I just figured one of them was dead or something. I get so it. So morbid. I get it. That's where my mind went. Oh, I'm morbid. Yes. At least I, my number two, anyway. <laughs> Uh, anybody in here who doesn't have a number two? Oh, my word. <laughs> Why am I looking around like a moron? I'm like... It's a normal is it, thing. Is it possible? Everybody... Wait, you Could don't have a number two? <laughs> okay, stop. Okay, sorry. <laughs> a friendly staff, that's my number one. Um, we, like I said, it's, Florida doesn't have a ton of, of stores, at least in our area. We'd love them more, I and mean, I'd like to go visit them all over the place. And so... These are things that we're looking for. We think there, I've been to many, many, many good stores, to be clear. Mm. You know, we can go through lists yeah. and lists of stores, and you go to more than I do that these days. Yep. Well, because yeah. there's more in your area. Yep. You know, but we've seen the bad ones, but we also want to celebrate the good ones. Right. Like Sam mm -hmm. said, it was a tough two years, right? Yeah. We're, Boy, glad, we're glad that we're coming out of that, but there's more competition now. Barnes & Noble's uh, Target. Barnes & Noble. But we love Target. There's not um, a... <laughs> There's not an S on Barnes & Noble. No one cares. You'll never break that. Just I've saying. tried. Sam, just I'm let just, that one go. I've does tried. Does he still say Valentine's? Valentine's? Yeah, he says Valentine's Day. I mispronounced no words, sir. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's just what we think, and um, we're glad you came along for us. Yeah. Before we go, we want to say thank you mostly to uh, Chris Yee for putting together the PowerPoint for thank us. Thank you, yeah. Chris. <laughs> Trollastic. And to uh, Roy Candidate running all the sound and equipment. Yeah, baby! What's up, Roy? And to Eric Summer, who wanted to hide under the table, but we talked him into going into the back instead. That would have been a little awkward. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you would have figured it out faster. <laughs> I would have. I would have. And hey, we're glad to have Sam back for the yeah. first show. Yeah. All right, well, we still have some time left in the convention. Um, make sure you get your games back in tomorrow on time mm -hmm. uh, from the library that's so well organized. Um, <laughs> I didn't organize it, so I don't know. Um, uh, I would like the record to show that I didn't say that. Okay. Well, anyway, we still got plenty of time. We're really glad you're here. Stay up as late as you want to tonight. Beat, go home safely tomorrow or Monday, whenever you go home. We're really glad you're here. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Have fun in the bathroom. Thank you.
Have fun in the bathroom. Awesome. Oh, right in the eyeball. That is a B-roll. That's right. We're on camera, and what can you do? You can't hear us, or you can hear us. I don't know if you can hear us. Yeah, they the show can hear us. Started yet. The people in the audience can't necessarily hear what I'm saying, but you can. Oh, it's so bright. <laughs> Who's in front of the screen? Sam Healy is. What a big head he has. You want me to move? No. I'm already like half outside, I'll move. man. I'll move over. You want to come in? Yeah. 